All right, so let's dive right in. We're heading into the first week of December, and the forecast for Europe is, well, it's a real paradox, isn't it? It really is. We're seeing this uh, very strange combination of unseasonable warmth, but at the same time, this major threat of intense damaging windstorms. So the typical winter script has been completely thrown out. Our mission here is to dig into the analysis and figure out what's behind this. And it all seems to point to one thing. The polar vortex. I mean, everything is being driven by this massive disruption high up in the stratosphere. We saw an incredibly early major stratospheric warming event, what we're calling SSW 2025. And early is the key word here, right? These things usually happen later in the winter. Exactly. January, February is the typical time frame. To have one this strong, this early, it's basically rewritten the weather map for the entire northern hemisphere before winter really even got started. Okay, so if something dramatic happens, you know, 50 kilometers up. How does that translate down to us, to the weather we actually experience so quickly? What's the mechanism? That's the crucial question. And uh, the best analogy is like a dam breaking. When the vortex destabilized up there, it sent this huge pulse of energy downwards. It fundamentally cranked up the speed of the jet stream. And that's what we call the zonal flow. That's the one, a very, very strong zonal flow. It means the weather is just racing from west to east across the Atlantic, no detours. So this powerful flow, it creates another effect, the NAO. Can you break that down? Yeah, so that strong flow creates a huge pressure difference between the Azores high and the Icelandic low. That gives us a strongly positive North Atlantic oscillation or NAO plus cell. Okay. And you can think of that NAO plus as a giant atmospheric shield. A shield. So what's it shielding Europe from and what is it letting in instead? It's acting as a temporary wall, basically. It's preventing any real Arctic air from plunging south. So instead of cold, you get this relentless, uh, steady stream of warm, moist air coming straight off the Atlantic. Which explains the temperature forecasts. We're seeing places like Athens still looking at, what, 10 to 15 degrees Celsius? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Widespread wintry conditions are off the table for at least the next week or two. But, and this is the really critical part for you listening, especially if you deal with risk or infrastructure, that high-speed flow isn't just bringing warmth. It's a superhighway for storms. That's a terrifying superhighway is a good way to put it. It's funneling multiple really intense storms right toward Western Europe. We've already seen model guidance for a low southwest of Iceland bottoming out around 950 millibars. Wow. Yeah. And Storm Bjorn was just named. It's the first of several powerful systems we see lined up, one after the other. And the analysis is really clear on this idea of compounded risk. It's not just about one storm, is it? It's the sequence. That's where it gets dangerous. A single big storm is one thing, but when you get hit again and again, there's no time for infrastructure to recover. The ground is saturated, things are already weakened. It multiplies the risk of systemic failure. And that's a huge deal for insurance, I imagine. It's the single largest source of natural catastrophe insurance loss in the world, European windstorms. So yes, a very big deal. This also creates some strange knock-on effects. So on the one hand, Good news, maybe, for energy bills less heating needed? For a little while, sure. But that's overshadowed by the risk to the power grids themselves, particularly non-continental ones like in Ireland or Malta. The high winds are a severe operational threat. And what about other sectors? I'm thinking winter tourism. This must be a crisis. Oh, it's a huge problem. You can't make technical snow without prolonged sub-zero temperatures, and the natural snowpack is just getting decimated by the warmth. For any resort below, say, 1,200 meters, this is a financially disastrous start to their most important season. So we have this really powerful SSW dynamic completely taking over. Oh. But what about the background signal? We have a La Nina, which usually points to a colder winter for Europe. Is the vortex just winning the battle for now? That's the perfect way to put it. It's creating what we call a bifurcated forecast. Right now, the vortex is in complete control, warm and stormy. But that supercharged NAO plus state is very unstable. It cannot last. Ah, uh, so a flip is coming. A significant atmospheric flip we expected after the first couple of weeks of December. Okay, so let's wrap this up with the big picture. We get through the warmth and the storms for now. What should we be bracing for on the other side of that flip? Well, that's the final thought to leave you with. This isn't a canceled winter, it's a delayed one. All that cold air, it's building. You can see the snowpack growing rapidly over Siberia, for instance that La Nina is still there in the background. So when this unstable pattern breaks? When it breaks, all that pent up cold has the potential to be released. So analysts should be preparing for a delayed but potentially very strong winter with a real cold and snow risk shifting later. 
into January. The volatility you're seeing now, that's just the prelude. 